Good morning! Unless it's not. Well, Metroid Dread finally came out, so I finally have something to be happy about. Well, that didn't last very long. Eh, happiness is overrated anyway. I don't need it. That's why I'm starting a club. Act now and you can be one of the first members of... Why am I only happy when playing Metroid? We're lucky this acronym wasn't taken. Metroid Dread is seemingly a game that took 20 years to release. Now, were they working on that same game for 20 years? Huh, would you look at that? I don't think anybody would really have said that they were waiting for Metroid Dread all that time. Honestly, I heard a lot of people assume it was a fake rumor or cancelled. Obviously, the Metroid team had other plans, with things like the Prime series, Other M, and even Samus Returns eventually on 3DS. But most of these titles were in 3D. And while they keep the gameplay pretty similar to the 2D titles, there's a pretty clear difference between playing a 2D and 3D game. Since I'll never stop complaining about Metroid Prime's controls long enough to actually play it, today I wanted to focus on all of the 2D Metroid games. All five of them. Is that it? Yeah, even with a couple characters in Smash and a relatively well-known name, Metroid isn't as big a franchise as Nintendo's heavy hitters. Even including the 3D titles, Metroid has way fewer than Zelda or Mario. The franchise has always been a bit more niche. Mario is a family-friendly character, and I know a few people who will buy a Nintendo console just to play a Zelda game. But Metroid tends to be a fans-only kind of game. Guess what I am? Good morning, unless it's not. So yeah, I'm not exactly an unbiased source. But I'm not gonna go easy. We're going all the way back to the NES to pick at every flaw in the franchise to see if Metroid Dread is really as worth it as I think. Pretty quickly, I run into a problem. How does this even work? The original Metroid was probably a really groundbreaking game back in the day, but I have no idea how anybody played this and became a fan. Many staples of the Metroid franchise weren't introduced until Super Metroid. The third game in the franchise. The original NES title didn't even have saving, a map, or most of the power-ups that are consistent throughout the franchise. And there are only three bosses in this game! Luckily, Nintendo eventually realized that this game made babies cry and released a much-needed remake of the game, Metroid Zero Mission. This game adds most of the missing things I just mentioned, multiple bosses, extra areas, and the ability to crouch. Now I'm really immersed. But which game would I say is the definitive version of the original Metroid? Zero Mission, obviously. The original game was probably only bare bones because it was on the NES. You can't run a tortilla chip on that thing. Lord knows I've tried. But at the same time, these are two completely different games. A lot of people surely hold nostalgia for the original. It was marvelous to explore back in the day. But I don't have NES nostalgia, so I'd rather never play the original again. Unfortunately, Metroid 2 is just the original again, but on Game Boy. Sure, they're different games, but aside from a couple of beams, they have the exact same issues. Limited power-ups, no map, and while this game has a few more bosses, most of them are just repeats of each other since you have to hunt down a whole bunch of Metroids. Although this game did add saving. But just like Zero Mission, Metroid 2 would receive an official remake years later in the form of Samus Returns. What a clever name. Good evening, unless it isn't. I've been remade, I'm a new guy, you can call me Brown Sash. But this game would come out on the 3DS and oh man did they decide to upgrade. The visuals are much better obviously, and along with new bosses, a much better theming for the planet, and a map, they added a few dramatic powers to this game. First are Ion Powers. Aeon Powers? which use a special meter and allow Samus some more powerful artifacts for exploration, including rapid fire and pinging breakable blocks. If you've ever played an old Metroid game, you'll know that finding breakable blocks is a huge bonus. Secondly, Samus can now use a melee counter to stop charging enemies. Doing this gives an opportunity to defeat them quickly and gives a lot of pickups. This can make the game a bit easier, but honestly, if you're like me and you've been playing Metroid for a while, it does take a little bit of getting used to. And last, but most important, 360 degree aiming. Hold down the R button and you can aim wherever your heart desires. And I'll tell you, with how picky the Metroid hitboxes can be, this was necessary. This also makes shooting down hidden blocks and such much easier as well. 
But again, which is the more definitive game? Unlike NES Metroid, it seems like fans don't really like the original version of this game. It's even to the point where they made a fan version with a lot of Super Metroid assets. And also, the original Game Boy looks so bad, uh, I'm going with Samus Returns. Big surprise, let's move on. I don't know guys, things aren't looking so great. I mean, don't get me wrong, the first two games were the originals, they set everything up, and I mean, one of them was for the Game Boy, so it had to be limiting, but... I don't really like the first two games. Don't worry though, this next one was everyone's favorite. Super Metroid is one of those games I always feel a community presence around. Loads of ROM hacks, tons of speedruns, it was even part of some contest Nintendo held a while back to win a signed 3DS. So then, I wonder what Stash thinks. You would, wouldn't you? Of course I love this game. The flow is great, the upgrades are iconic, and some of the hidden secrets are... What's the word? Oh, it's in there, trust me. Yeah, as much as I love this game, it definitely has a lot of that leftover Super Nintendo era stuff. People hate the later games for being too handholdy, but I'd argue this is the only good Metroid game that doesn't give you the exact path to go. And I think that's something people misunderstand. Exploration is fun, yes, that's why Metroid is fun. But backtracking isn't. I don't want to spend hours looking around a map to find the one place I can go, and when you get later into these games, the maps are huge! You could be blocked from progression because you were supposed to know, oh right, there was that one tile of cheese back there! What the? Oh, you knew this was coming! Don't you give me that look! Yeah! Oh, please! Ah! Oh my goodness! Ah! Please stop! But to be fair, Super Metroid actually has less of this than the previous titles. It does exist, but usually in an effort to get some extra health or ammo. Every once in a while, I think the game expects you to naturally know a creative way to use a certain power-up, like the Shine Spark, which definitely got me my first time. And out of everything, I'd say this game has the most memorable bosses. Kraid, Krokemeyer, Plant Guy, Electric Fire Ghost. Their names aren't mentioned in game, I'm sorry! And for some reason, Ridley again and Mother Brain again? I'll be honest, I get this game confused with the original sometimes. They both take place on Zebes, the areas are similar, you even get the Morph Ball in the exact same spot, why is nobody talking about this? Luckily, Super Metroid hits home a bit more at the end, with the extra Mother Brain phase, and a baby Metroid you saved in Metroid 2 coming back to save the day and net you the Hyper Beam. I get it, if I had three kids I'd favor the third one too, but we don't, we have five, so let's keep moving. I think my opinion on this next game is going to be a bit of a controversial one. Metroid Fusion gets a lot of flack for being too linear and holding your hand. But honestly, please do, I'm so lonely. For me, Metroid Fusion is an insanely good game. I mean, this was on the GBA, and it's just as good as the Super Nintendo title, but with so much more atmosphere, with subtle hints at upcoming threats, the X-Parasite, and the deadly SAX. Besides, as great as Super Metroid was, what are these controls? You have to press select to switch between ammo types one at a time? Even for the power bombs and x-ray scope? I can't take this anymore, I need to live! And sure, Metroid Fusion doesn't 100% fix this issue, but they at least give you the R button for missiles and it is a huge quality of life improvement. The same goes for power bombs in this game. And you don't have to switch when you get super missiles, they just completely overwrite regular missiles. I think a lot of people prefer Super Metroid to this game, and I probably would too if it weren't for the major upgrade to controls here. I also did really like the added ambiance of the SAX roaming about, and the tense encounters with it. You aren't the strongest thing out there anymore, and this game makes it known which made me all that much more excited when I saw the trailers for Metroid Dread with the Emmy ready to hunt you down. So Zero Mission has perfect sequencing, Samus Returns has 360 aiming and the melee counter, uh, Super Metroid has incredible bosses, Metroid Fusion adds in those tense encounters, almost like a, a horror game even, and improves the controls a lot in my opinion. If only there was some way to mix all of these elements together. You see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, maybe I'm a bit biased because this is truly the only modern Metroid game. Federation Force doesn't count. 
but I feel like this is the first game where nothing at all gets in the way. The sequence is smooth, every single obstacle and power-up leads directly into the next, and I never had those Metroid moments like I usually do. Actually, on that same note, I heard a lot of people defending that part of the game when Scott Jaffe claimed the game was unfair. And after I heard about that, I actually had to play through the game again just to figure out which room he was even talking about. Now you know you messed up when I had so little trouble, I don't even know what room you're talking about. What was I talking about? So the sequence is fine-tuned, but another thing I really liked about this game was the inclusion of an intentional sequence break. The developers realized you could get a few power-ups out of order if you were a skilled player, and instead of trying to avoid this, they actually added in a reason to do it, because it allows you to take out one of the game's bosses very quickly. Speaking of which, this game has the best bosses yet. Super Metroid comes close, don't get me wrong, but honestly, the bosses in this game are so fine-tuned around your power set at each moment. None of them ever feel like you're too strong or too weak. I love Kraid, and I hate knowing why Kraid is in my game. <gasps> yeah, just in case you wanted to compare this game to Super Metroid even more, Kraid is just here for some reason. Almost perfectly recreated from his other appearances in half of the series. The game makes zero references as to why, and in my opinion, he's one of the weaker bosses in this game. I'll do a tier list someday. The 360 aiming and melee counter are back from Samus Returns, but this time they're fully implemented into enemy design. And they've also added a nice slide move to help you get around and even require it for some boss fights. Everything just moves so smoothly. We also get some new Aeon powers, which feel a lot better here because they were originally designed for the game instead of being slapped into a remake. And of course, one of my favorite additions is the expansion of the SAX encounters from Fusion. There are a handful of invulnerable robots called Emmy scattered throughout the world, and they are fantastic parts of the game. Intense, clever, every time you hear that beeping, you know what to expect. Get down! Every one requires a single-use weapon to take down, and these are such a good addition to the formula. Each area has you traversing through these sections as you collect the correct power-ups to progress, and they never get less scary. Well, unless you've beaten the game four or more times. I am working on a fifth. The story is also, at least in my opinion, one of the stronger ones we've seen. Mostly because 2D Metroid lacks very much story. I have seen some complaints about Metroid Dreads, but I think it wrapped up a lot of things nicely and makes you feel more justified in being the absolute badass you are by the end of the game. I won't talk about it much because it's a new game, and there still isn't a lot to talk about, so make sure to check it out sometime. So there we have it. I really wanted to talk about the history of Metroid because it really feels like the developers looked back at the past to figure out what worked and what didn't. Every enemy, every power-up, it's all there to make you feel like the enemies are getting more dangerous, but so are you. And I know a lot of people will probably still prefer Super Metroid, but I'm definitely going to have to go with Metroid Dread on this one. Because you have to cycle between the missiles, super missiles, power bomb, grapple beam, and x-ray scope. What the hell is this? Mm -hmm.